Hey guys, it's Sherry. I hope that you are having a fantastic day. Y'all, let's do some fun, simple, but practical paper crafting. Stay tuned. So welcome everyone to my channel. I am so thankful that you stopped by because today we are going to do something so fabulous. So I am going to hold it up and show you what it is, but I'll give you a more up close look once we get ready to make this fabulous project. So what this is, is a mini stationery set. On the top, we have a tear away paper pad. And on the bottom, we have some loose leaf. And here in the front, you can see that we have an opening. So you're able to go in and grab those loose pieces and make your notes and do whatever it is you want to do with the set. But y'all look at how gorgeous this is. And not only will this make a great Mother's Day gift or a great birthday gift or a great anytime gift, it will also make a great craft fair seller because we are going to make this in the most economical way. So y'all know what time it is. It is time to get started. All right, guys, so I'm going to give you a closer look at this fabulous project. It does have a nice acetate opening on it. I'm actually trying to move it to get it out of the way of the glare of my lights. However, I think this is probably the best it's going to get. So we have the sweet acetate lid on the top. And then on the end, hopefully you're able to see that opening. And that allows you to scoop out paper as you need it. And then here at the top, we have a sweet tearaway paper pad that I'll show you how I made. And then the acetate lid is designed just to slide right down on the inside. And now you can get a look at this beautiful presentation. So I am going to set this to the side and we're going to make it. So to make this project, we are starting with some of that printer paper that I showed you guys in a previous video. It really is decorative printer paper that we can use. I will have a link for this paper in the description box, but I encourage you guys to go out and check out all of the wonderful decorative printer papers that are out there. Don't just settle on the ones that I'm showing you here because there are so many more out there. So then what I did was I took the printer paper and I cut it into portions. So what I have here, I have 25 sheets that measure four and a half by five, and I have 25 sheets that measure four and a half by three and a half. So I'm just going to set these to the side because we don't need them right now. And then this is going to be a chipboard project. So if you don't have chipboard, please use whatever it is you have access to. And also in the description box, I have a video on how I cut my chipboard. So if you're curious, please check out that video. So I have a piece of chipboard that measures nine and a quarter by five and a quarter. I have the backer piece for my tearaway pad, and this measures four and a half by five. Then I have two very thin strips, and these measure three eighths of an inch by nine. I have two smaller thin strips, and these measure three eighths of an inch by two. And then we're going to need two pieces that measure three eighths of an inch by four and three quarters. So those are our chipboard pieces. Then we'll have our decorative paper pieces. So I'll have two pieces that measure four and three quarters by two. And I'll have two pieces that measure 12 by two. And then I'll have this piece that measures seven and a half by 12. And the paper that I'm using is the Home Again collection from Carta Bella. And the SKU, if you're looking for this paper, is 442-16-26246. And then I have a piece of acetate, and this acetate measures 10 and 1 8 by 6. All right, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to take our two pieces that measure 12 by 2 and one piece that measures 2 by 4 and 3 quarters, and we're going to score at half an inch and at one. And we're going to do this on these three pieces. So on both of your 12 by two pieces, score at half an inch and one. And then on one of the two by four and three quarter inch pieces, score at half an inch and at one. So then we're going to take the two by 12 inch pieces and we're going to score at half an inch and at two and a half, and then at 11 and a half. 
Take my second 12 by two inch piece. I'm going to score at half an inch, two and a half, and 11 and a half. And now we're just going to fold all of these scores. We aren't necessarily going to burnish them, but we just want to fold them so that we can figure out where we need to start matching up because we're actually going to be joining these together. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our 12 inch strips and where we have scored them at 11 and a half, we're going to take that, we're going to add some adhesive to that piece and we're going to join it to one side of our two by four and three quarter inch piece. So you'll see what I mean. So there's that half inch fold. I am going to add my glue on this side. Then I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to match it up score mark to score mark. So if I fold it, this folds right inside of that. And you will have seams, but they'll be on the back. And you really won't notice them because we're using the same paper all the way around. So it's going to blend seamlessly. So then we're going to take this side and do the same thing. So I'm going to add my glue right there. Then I'll take this piece and I'm simply going to match it. And I'm making sure that I match it score mark to score mark. So when I fold, everything will fold exactly where it should. So now we're going to have this one long continuous piece. You're going to have two one half inch folds right at the top and then you're going to have a wide panel going all the way across. This is the bottom. So everywhere that we have a score mark, we are going to notch out. So I'll show you what I mean. So on the end, we're actually going to remove that end piece all together. And then I'll come across, find my next score and notch. And then when we get to where we joined our pieces, we need to notch because we do have a score mark there. So let me just pull that out and clean that up. And then we'll come to the other side where we joined. And again, we need to notch. And then I'll come to this end and I'll notch here. Then I'm going to notch right here to remove this piece at the corner. Then when I get to the corner, I'm going to come to that top little square and remove it. So hopefully this is making sense. And then I'll come to the opposite side and do the same thing. So on the end, we need to remove that piece. And now you'll see what I mean. So you're going to have an end piece that looks like this on both ends. So now that we have this done, this is actually how we're going to fold this to make our box. And for those of you with eagle eyes, I actually made a mistake right here and I should not have cut there, but I did. So it's no big deal because it's going to work out anyway, but we are actually going to take this in a few minutes and we'll be folding it just like that. But before we do, we are just going to take our strips of chipboard and we're going to lay them down on the inside of our score mark so that we'll have a firmer wrap around. So what I'm going to do guys is I am going to test fit all of my pieces before I actually glue them down and I want to make sure that they fall inside of my score mark. So if they don't, I am just going to trim away a little bit. So I don't want them hitting the score top or bottom or on the sides. So once I have a fit, I'm just going to use some glue and place that down 
inside of the score mark. And then basically I'm going to do this in each panel. So I'm going to take my long panel and trim away some of that. And now I can glue it down. And, this and actually adding these chipboard strips just helps us to have a little bit of firmness to the box wall. So then I'll do the same thing here. I'm going to remove a little bit and then I'll test it. And we'll place this down. And then we'll come over to the other side, do the same thing. Do your test fit. Make sure that it's within the inside of the score marks and where it isn't, just trim. And now I'm adding my glue. And I'm going to take this piece and place it down. And then I'll take my final piece, see how that fits. And I'm going to trim away just a little bit. And now we'll have that stabilizer strip going all the way through. And we are simply going to take this piece and fold it over. But before I do, I'm going to take some glue on these little end pieces and just fold those in. And so now we can take our glue and I'm just going to place glue coverage all over the top from end to end, and then we're just going to fold it over. So we are going to take this, fold it over, and I'll just start using my big old spatula to get it nice and stuck. And for those of you who might be new to my channel, I do use Reptile Adhesive as my wet glue. And you'll find a link for that in the description box if you're interested. So I am just going along this. We are going to get everything nice and stuck. And I'm going to make sure I have a nice stick where I joined my papers. And guys, this is the perfect project for sheet paper. But I have heard from so many of you that you don't have sheet paper, but you would like to be able to make some of the projects that require it. So this is just one of those ways that we can do it. So now we're going to take all of these pieces and just sort of fold them in and when we put the box together, it's going to go down just like this. So I'm going to set that to the side. We're going to bring in our piece that measures nine and a quarter by five and a quarter. I have already added double stick tape to the back. I am going to bring in my piece of seven and a half by 12 inch decorative card stock and go ahead and just trim away my label piece and now I'm going to use my stylus I'm going to take that stylus butt it against the chipboard and then drive it into the paper to get a nice score
Then once I have that score, we'll just stand it up and fold it over on all four sides. You're basically getting that paper used to being folded. Now I'm going to take my finger blade, go in and miter my edges. And so now I'll take this, we're going to fold it over. And this time I'm just going to use my tape runner, lay down some tape, fold that over, get that nice and stuck. And I'll do the same thing on all four sides. So let's just fold it over and get it stuck. Then once I have it stuck, I am going to take my big old spatula and just go around getting everything nice and squared. And now we have the base for our box. So we're going to take our box and we're going to lay it down on our base just like this. So I am going to take my glue, place my glue all over my panels. Don't be stingy with your glue. And I like using glue on projects like this because I think it just gives me a longer stick over time. So we are just going to place all of our glue. Now I can take this and I'm going to place it down. First, I'm just sort of eyeballing it. And then I'll bring it in. And then I'll start just doing my manipulating of getting it squared and placed where I want it. So I'm going to lift it. And basically what I'm trying to do is make sure the back is nice and straight, make sure my sides are straight, then make sure that front is straight, nice and squared. And when it looks like I have a decent stick, then I can use my big old spatula to come in and we're gonna get everything nice and stuck. And now you can see that when we go around and take a look Everything does seem to be where it should be. And y'all, one thing that I forgot to mention when we went through the supplies is that you will need a liner piece. And I'm starting with a liner piece that measures four and five eighths by eight and seven eighths. So we're going to take that liner and do a test fit. And I can see where I need to shorten this just a little bit. So I'm just going to take off a sliver, but when you cut your liner, start with the piece that measures four and five eighths by eight and seven eighths, and then go through the test and trim process. So that looks like a pretty good fit to me. So I am just going to take some of my tape and place some double stick tape on the back. So I am going to take my liner piece, just get it placed on the inside, and then I'll just lay it down. And you can see how pretty that is. And it's okay if you have some of that brown showing because it just blends in with the brown that already exists on my paper. So whatever paper pattern you're using, when you fold it over, don't stress if you have a little bit of that showing because it's okay. 
So now that we have this, we are going to go ahead and make our tearaway pad. So I am going to grab my 25 pieces of four and a half by five and my chipboard that measures four and a half by five and I clip them together just like this and I'll be adding the glue to the four and a half inch sides. I'm going to bring in my glue gun and a scrap piece of chipboard. So easy peasy. We are simply going to take some hot glue, place that hot glue across the top. Then I'll use my scrap chipboard and just spread across the top. We'll let that dry and then we'll be able to tear away our paper. So now that this is dry, I am simply going to use my finger blade and where I have excess glue sticking out, I'm just going to grab it with my blade and just give it a little tug and just clean away that excess glue. We have, and now you can see we have our beautiful little stationary combo. What we need to do is we need to go ahead and make the divider piece for the inside. So what I have here is a piece that measures 3 8 by 4 and 3 quarters. But what I did was trimmed it down just a little bit because I don't want it to hit the wall. So I actually trimmed it to 4 and 5 8 So we have a piece that is 3 8 by 4 and 5 8 Then I have my scrap piece and this piece is 2 by four and five eighths. All right guys, so we're going to take that scrap piece that measures two by four and five eighths. We're going to score on the two inch side at half an inch, at one, and at one and a half. Then we're going to take it, fold it in half, and then we'll take those outer pieces and fold them out so it looks like this. Then we'll take our chipboard piece that measures 3 8 7 inch by 4 and 5 8 add some glue we're going to take that piece put it inside of this piece and then we'll close it and get everything nice and stuck and this is what we'll have and so now you just need to figure out where this needs to go the best way to do it is to take that tear away pad and put it down then take one of your loose pieces put it down and then you can kind of get a you can get a gauge of where it is you want to place it this is actually the easiest way instead of trying to measure so what i'm going to do for myself and it won't be anything intense is i'm just making a little score mark and you can't even see it but i can i made a little score right there on the side so when I put this down, I'll know where I need to put it. So I'm going to place my glue. And then I'm going to take this, place it down. Find that score mark that I made. Get that nice and straight. And to get it straight, I'm going to pick it up and look at it. And now I can take my big old spatula, go on the inside, and let's just get that stuck. And so now I can take my tearaway pad, place it in, take my little loose pieces, place those in, and we have a really good fit on this. And now we need to make the acetate top. Okay, so to make the acetate top, I'm actually going to show you what I'll be doing on a white piece because you won't be able to see this on the acetate. So I have my piece that measures 6 by 10 and 1 8, and I am going to score at 5 8 7 inch on all four sides. Then I am going to fold and burnish all of my scores so then I am going to just cut out on all sides of that acetate just like this 
So you're just going to go in and angle all sides of your acetate. So here is my finished acetate piece. Hopefully you can see where I have cut out all of my ends and now we're ready to just put it on the box. But before I do, I'm going to take a dryer sheet and just go on the inside of that acetate because sometimes you can get a static buildup and I want to make sure that my papers aren't going to stick to the acetate. So then all we need to do is take our acetate lid and just fit it on the inside of our box. What I am going to do is I am going to go to my sticker book because I want to add just a little topper to this. So I'm going to remove my lid and I'm going to go through and just find a little sticker. And I think I just want to stay with this one because I like it. And all you have to do is just place it down and then fold it over. And then if you have any excess, just use your scissors to trim away that excess. And so now I can find myself just a sweet little sticker to go on top. And I think I'm going to go with this bird sticker. The sticker book that I'm using is from Kaiser Craft and it is from the Morning Dew Collection. So I am going to take this bird and just place him on just like that. I'm going to go back and just remove any static that might have built up. And then once again, we can take our lid and put it back on and you can see just how gorgeous this set is. Now, if I was selling or gifting this set, I would take a piece of clear tape and add a piece of clear tape right here on the acetate to right there. And make sure that it's a low tack clear tape, one that's not too, too sticky. And they have great low tack clear tape at the Dollar Tree so that when you do um, open it, then you don't have to worry about pulling away the paper. But I would definitely add something to this to keep it closed so that if you're selling this at a craft fair, dirty hands or oily hands can't open this and touch your beautiful papers on the inside. So I have brought that first one back in so that y'all can see all of this gorgeous, gorgeous goodness in this little set. So easy to make, so economical, because you're taking a whole pack of paper and then you're trimming it down and dividing it to create these awesome, awesome sets. So guys, I hope that you have liked this fun, easy project. If you have, please hit the like button. If you are not a subscriber to my channel, I would love to have you join my online crafting family. You guys, as always, please be safe, be kind, happy crafting, and we'll chat later. Bye.